Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. I welcome all of you guys to the yet another lecture of the applied analytics course which is uh, for the descriptive, prescriptive and predictive analytics and we are running this course from a practitioner's approach. This is the title of the course is practitioner's approach in this case and we have been uh, seeing different aspects of analytics. Why is it important? Why is the having a uh, question in mind or a hypothesis in mind is important and all and we already saw that we require three things important. One is to identify the details of the independent variable, dependent variable and appropriate descriptive statistics or appropriate uh, statistic test is to be identified to find out uh, the answer to the question, the decision question in hand. And we started looking into how to describe the data and we already saw some few techniques out of this and uh, one of them we saw was uh, uh, earlier was frequency distribution where we were using it for uh, uh, handling large set of data. So, today we are going to see another new tool called stem and leaf plot and this is another descriptive analytics tool. Okay. So, we are going to study a new descriptive analytics tool called uh, stem and leaf plot. So, as we said earlier the when you have large set of data remember in the earlier discussion we said data comes in two forms to analysts the people who are doing data analysis or data analytics it comes in two forms number one too much or number two too less so and each one of these scenarios require and requiring uh, separate approaches. Okay. In this case, we started seeing that when you have a large data set. So, today what we are talking going to talk about is data grouping issues which are predominantly pertaining to the large data sets. So, when the data set is large or if data is too much, make it manageable. That is the fundamental idea behind it. How do we make it manageable? One of the way to do this is, okay, so what we are doing is when you have a large data set, okay, bring down the, the size of data set for better management and understanding. See we are still trying to figure out what the research question is, we are try still trying to identify what is the decision problem. or for that we are trying to get a feeling of the data and when you have too much of data then you have to bring in the data side out size out for manageability and the main reason of why do you bring it down to manageability the objective behind it is putting data into a manageable form by uh, sacrificing some information or as we said earlier one major tool is frequency distribution tool of handling large data set is frequency distribution frequency distribution so where what we are doing is we are identifying 
not the individual values. Okay. Here instead of the value, we are looking at identify which class it belongs to, which class the data belongs to. Okay. So, that is what we are looking in the frequency distribution. The idea of this is that, so that you can put the data into a manageable form and by in doing that you sacrifice some information. So, what is the major disadvantage? Okay. The disadvantage of frequency distribution as I said earlier is, it results in some loss of information. What is that loss of information? Individual data values, individual data values are sacrificed for information of the class to which the data belongs to. So, here we are sacrificing the individual data values and instead we are getting the information on which class the data value belongs to. So, the individual data value is no longer there, instead the membership of a particular class is what we are getting and so that the whole data reduces to a manageable tabular format. So, the idea is that entire data reduces, reduces to a manageable table. That is what the frequency distribution is all about. So, now if you want to do, if you want to conduct preliminary exploration of data sets without losing any information, then obviously frequency distribution, distribution is not an ideal choice. So, hence new descriptive analytics tool or tools is or are required. And one such tool that we are going to see today is called the stem and leaf plot or stem and leaf diagram, which allows us to study the data, large data sets without losing too much of information. So, one way to study the stem and leaf plot, so one important descriptive analytics tool that allows data grouping, grouping without missing individual data values is the stem and leaf plot or stem and leaf diagram. You can call it either way. Okay. And what is it? We will first do an example and with that example we will compare it between. So, what we will do is use this problem to compare with frequency distribution. So, we compare with the frequency distribution how the stem and leaf plot is done and using that then we will see how which one is better stuff like that. This example is adapted from the Miller, Fund and Johnson probability in statistics for engineers and scientists and fourth edition and this data there is you can see that there is 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, 5 columns and 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 rows 
So, you have somewhere close to 20 observations here, observations or 20 data values are available here. Okay. And this data is about the humidity readings okay, rounded to the nearest integer and this data we will use it to first plot a frequency distribution and then we will see how frequency distribution can be converted to stem and leaf plot in which the missing observation can be retrieved. So, the first step as we said earlier, okay, uh, step 1 sort data in ascending ascending order now. Okay. So, the sorting will give us is if you look at this the lowest value in this whole regard is that is a 17 that is a 12. So, the lowest value is a 12. So, the data will start from 12 then we have 12 then there is a after that then we have a 15 then there is a 17. So, 15 17 then we have 21 21. So, 21 21 then we have 23 then there is 24, then there is 25, 27, 28, 29, 32, 34, 34, 2 thirty-fours, right, this one and this one, 34 and 37, 39, then 42, 44, then 48, and 53. So, 53 is the largest value, right. I do not see there is any other larger value than this. So, this implies the lowest value equals 12, largest equals 53 and range equals 53 minus 12. So, that will be 41, right? Yes. So, now the question is you can look at multiple ways we saw how to make classes and all those kind of things. But to make the life easy, I am just going to make the classes vary from. So, it is about 41. So, if I have uh, 5 classes, I can make it to, uh, I think I can make classes in different ways. So, what I will do is that we have a minimum of 5 to 15 classes is what we studied yesterday in the earlier in the frequency distribution. Classes are required for frequency distribution. Okay. So, I can do something like make it as a 5 classes of 10 and then I can start from 10 I can go all the way up to 60. So, I will start the lower value I will revise the lower value value to 10 and larger value, largest value to uh, 59, both inclusive something like this. Okay. So, then I can have a, a class size of like 10 each. Okay. So, let us see how it can be done. So, let me make a frequency distribution out of this for 5 classes. So, the frequency distribution will be classes okay, and you have the tally and the frequency. Okay. Oops, sorry, somewhat here. So, the first class I will start from 10 the lowest value and I will go all the way to 19 both 10 and 19 included because all the values are single digit values. Then the next will start from 20 and go all the way to 29 then 30 all the way to 39, 40 all the way to 49 and 50 all the way to 59. Okay. So, in which I should get all the values completed as part of this and I can also say that in the if you look at the previous data you can see that between the first class which is 10 and 19 I have 3 values 12, 15 and 17. So, in a frequency distribution I will be doing 1, 2, 3. So, that will be the 3. Then 20 to 29 is my next class. So, then I go back to the previous one. So, 20 to 29. So, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. 
there are 8 of them. So, it starts with 20. So, 21 to 29, I will have 29 is also included because that is how the class is being defined. So, if you look at in this, I will have 8 of them. So, it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Then the next class is 30 to 39. So, I can go and do it as 30 to 39 will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 5 of them. Okay. So, it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Next is 40 to 49. So, I will go as uh, 1, 2, 3, 3 of them. So, I will come by and mark 3 here. And the 50 to 59, there is only 1. We already saw that. 58 the value. So, that we wrote it. And the frequency will come to be this is 3, this is 8, this is 5, this is 3 and this is 1. Okay. And the total number of frequency will come to uh, 5 plus 3, 8, 16, 19, 20. So, there are total 20 observations. Okay. And then we know how to do the relative frequency. Okay. And the relative frequency can be calculated by 3 out of 20, 8 out of 20, 5 out of 20, 3 out of 20, 1 out of 20 like this. And this will give you the individual relative frequencies and then we were using histogram to plot this. Now, in this process, in doing this, this is the area where we identify how many data values belong to a specific class. And that is what this tally identifies for you. So, in this process, you are losing this information. Now, assume that instead of doing this, I revise this diagram in such a way that let us look at a scenario where I am having the same classes, okay, 10 to 19, then 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, and 50 to 59. Let us say I have a classes like this and instead of the tally, okay, instead of the tally, I have three values belonging to this, the 10 to 19. If I write only the last digits, so remember, replace, replace tally marks with last digit, digits of the data. If I do that, then I can write it as this portion 10 to 19. If you go back, I can see that I have the values of 12, 15 and 17. So, the digits, last digits is 2, 5 and 7. So, then I can write it as here as 2, 5 and 7. So, this is the last three digits. So, instead of the three tally, these three tally, we are replacing it with the last three digits of the data value. So, now let us look at 20 to 29. If you look into that, then we can find out that, let us go back and take a look into it. We have values of 21, 21, 23, 24, 25, 27, 28 and 29. So, you have digits 1, 1, 3, 4, 5 and 7, 7, 8 and 9. So, using that, let us try to write that digits right here, which is 1, 21, the next one is 21, then we have 23, then we have 24, then 25, then 27, 28 and 29. Okay. If the, so, there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. These are the same 8 values right here, okay. but the last digits of it. Now, if you look at the 30 to 39 class, we have what we call as the 32, 34, 34, 37, 39. So, it you have 2, 4, 4, 7 and 9 are the last digits. Okay. If we do that, then we have the last 5 digits will be uh, 2, 4 and 4 and 7 and 9. Okay. Similarly, 40 to 49, we go back, we will see that 
42, 44 and 48, 3 values, last digits 2, 4 and 8 are available here. So, we will write here the last as 2, 4 and 8 and then we go back and take a look into the last data and we find that in 50, the last digit is 53, so 3 is the last digit. So, we come back and write the last digit as 3. Okay. So, this type of a display where the tally marks are replaced with the last digits of the data. Such a display, okay. now we can say that okay, these are the digits, these are, so now we can say 10 to 19 within this the last digits are 2, 5 and 7. So, the value that is important to us is the tens position which is the 10, 1 value. So, you can easily replace this instead of this 10 and 19, you can write it by saying that okay, fine I will change the diagram instead of the classes, I will write it as the first 10 to 19 I can write it as 1 star whatever it is. Then 20 to 29 I will write it as 2 star, the 30 to 39 I will write 3 star and 40 to 49 I will write it as 4 star and 50 to 59 I will write it as 5 star like this and then I can write the digits right here. Okay. I can do the, that part. So, let us see how I can translate transform this current modified version. So, this we can say that modify modified frequency distribution with individual values. Okay. If that is the case, then let us see how we can do in that particular format that we were talking about. So, I will end up doing it this particular fashion. We can have the 1 star which is the 2 star, 3 star, 4 star and 5 star. So, which means this 1 star means this is the 10 to 19, this is the 20 to 29, this is the 30 to 39, uh, 40 to 49 and 50 to 59. So, what we are saying here is that this is represented, the, the digit is, is important to us is the 1. Okay. So, when I write here it as uh, basically uh, 2, 5 and 7, then that means the values here are the 3 values in this 10 to 19 class or the with the tens digit as uh, 1, we have 12, 15 and 17. Okay. Similarly, if you look at the previous case, you will see that 1, 1, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9 is the next one. Okay. So, we write it the same way. So, it is 1, 1, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9. So, this means these values are 21, 21, 23, 24, 25, 27, 28 and 29. So, you can see that you are not losing any of the information as part of this. Similarly, 30 to 39 we had 32, 34, 34, 37 and 39 that 5 values. So, you can say that the units digit 2, 4, 4, 7, 9 gives you the last values and in the same way 40 is 42. 44 and 48 and 50 is 53. Okay. So, it gives you a similar appearance. So, here it, the if you look at the previous diagram, you can kind of see that okay, this is how the uh, data was behaving in this case. Okay. You can think about it as a rough case, uh, rough system and you can kind of say that you know a similar pattern is also observed here. So, some amount of pattern without losing the uh, significance of the system can be easily obtained or easily visualized in a system like this. Okay. And you can also say that instead of using these stars, you can replace the whole system with the help of without using any star, you can say that 1, 2, 3, uh, 4 and 5 as the uh, digits, the tens digits and you have your 2, 5 and 7, uh, 1, 1, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, okay. then 2, 4, 4, 7, 9 and 2, 4, 8 and 3. This is what you can call as the, this diagram that I just drew now. This is called as the stem and leaf display or stem and leaf diagram. Okay. So, this diagram 
stem and leaf is similar to uh, frequency distribution but without missing individual uh, data values. It will be tricky for us to do the uh, frequency, I mean relative frequency and cumulative frequency and those kind of things because you have to then again count these values and put that other thing. It could be confusing. So, people only draw up to this much. Okay. So, these individual rows, each rows, okay, each row, this is called as the stem. Okay. So, this is stems, these are all stems. Okay. This is a stem, they are all stems. Individual values here in each stem, okay. these are the leaves. So, if you think about this as a tree, a trunk of a tree and then these are the branches okay, or the leaves that are coming out of each of the stem, then you can call these as the leaves of the diagram. Okay. So, this kind of a display is what we call as the stem and leaf display and each line in the display as we said earlier, each line in the display is a stem. Okay. So, if we go back, then we know that these are the stem, each line in the display, this is a stem. Okay. Now, uh, each digit on the stem to the right of the vertical line is the leaf. Okay. Each stem to the right of the vertical line is the leaf. So, uh, each stem to the right of the vertical line, this is the vertical line. Okay. Vertical line the right of it, each one of these individual values is called as the leaves. So, values to the left of the vertical line is also called as the stem labels. Okay. So, the right side is the leaves, the left side is called as the stem labels. So, if you go back, you will see that these ones, okay, these are the stems and each one of these, these are this, these individual values are the stem labels. Okay. So, one is the stem label for the first row kind of a thing. Okay. Now, the stem and leaf what it does is it presents a similar picture as that of the tally of the frequency distribution, but retains the original information. Okay. So, it has a lot of similarity as like that of the frequency distribution, but it retains the original information that is the biggest difference of this. And it is a good tool for exploratory data analysis. It allows you to uh, analyze the data okay, or this is a good, to, this is also called as descriptive analytics. We are able to describe the data without losing the plot. Okay. Now, there are few things that we need to think about. Okay. So, obviously, people will ask a question, if you have a data called 11.32 then 11.97 or something like this and 11.46, how would you make a stem and a leaf kind of a thing. Obviously, if you want you can think about it as this much being the you know uh, stem and the leaf. So, this part is the stem, this part becomes the leaf kind of a thing. So, then you can have a diagram in which you can say that it is 11.3. 3, 11.4, 11.9, .4, that kind of a thing in which 11.3 you will have 2, 11.4 you will have 6, 11.9 you will have 7 and if you get a new value called 11.54 or something like that, then the question will be like uh, it will be a, then you will change, you will basically saying that okay fine. So, there will be, you will split again 11.5 of 4 and then 11.9 of 7. And then you got an x value called 11.57. So, then that will get added right here 7 like this. So, in a system where you have a stem and leaf plot going on. So, as I said earlier, these are your stem labels and these are your leaves. Okay. 
and the system where you are getting data continuously coming in you can use this mechanism to uh, display your data without losing much of the result much of the information uh, there are few uh, so the major advantage the major advantage is uh, group data data without losing information okay however there are some disadvantages to the system also okay certain disadvantages okay number 1 too many data will result in crowded leaves since you are putting the last digit values and you keep on putting it for a large set of values so typically this number is you know couple 100 uh, 200 to 300 data values above which it starts looking really crowded second thing is the calculation of relative frequency frequency uh, is slightly complicated uh, the uh, advantage of why why is this relative frequency important is because it also tells you relative frequency is important to analyst because it provides information on on what percentage of all data values belong to that particular class okay or it suggests where to focus the analysis okay that is the most important aspect of the relative frequency and calculation of the relative frequency is not very straightforward when you have a diagram like this okay it is much more easier to do that in the case of a uh, original frequency distribution but if you combine so hence hence combining a stem leaf followed by frequency distribution is a good approach so first maybe do a stem and leaf diagram and after that you follow it up with a frequency distribution which in a way will allow you to uh, analyze the data um, better so hence this brings us an important point descriptive analytics analytics uh, require multiple tools uh, to be used to obtain meaningful insights into the data set. So, this is an important thing that you need to remember because in if you use just one tool you I am pretty sure that there is no one single descriptive analytics tool that completely describes the data. So, you will have to use multiple tools in a tandem and or in a cascading fashion to understand different nuances of the data. So, now we have studied stem and leaf and we also seen frequency distribution and how they are connected to each other and how to even make a stem and a leaf kind of a system and typically these things I will again recommend that you can use uh, Microsoft Excel or something because the uh, rule of thumb in this case is this 
rule of thumb for practitioners is uh, up to 100 no issues up to 100 data points no issues for s and l stem and leaf up to 200 crowding uh, 200 or 250 beyond 250 avoid okay so up to 200 or 250 data points you can think about making stem and leaf but beyond 250 data points avoid reusing stem and leaf because it will just defeat the purpose of the data will look so crowded that you would not be able to make any uh, proper uh, identification out of that data okay. so with this what we will do today is uh, we will conclude today's uh, this short session on how to make the stem and leaf but before concluding i will also say that the best software for this is excel only excel or r okay either one of them will do a good job of it but lot of these things you can do it by yourself in excel and i would recommend you to study stem and leaf using excel uh, as such okay and in the next class what we will do is we'll get into a little bit more complicated tools like box and whisker plot and how to do that using r and uh, the r code associated with it that will also be shown in the class and then from there we look into scatter diagram and then regression and those kind of things okay so we have uh, already getting into different tools and analyzing this so i really hope that you guys are doing your homework and uh, uh, working on the problems and uh, trying to solve this and bringing the skills to yourself because remember in analytics it is the skills that matters to you okay understanding of the technique and the skill how to use the uh, technique is most important to you um, so until the next class uh, it's uh, thank you from my side and uh, uh, wish you all a good learning thank you very much